In the last lecture, we learned how to use one single state instead of having multiple states to gather user input from the form. To do that, here we are using this useState function. And to this useState function, we are passing an object. And this object has these five properties, which is initialized with empty string. So this user input variable here will be initialized with this object. Then to update the value of this user input object, we can call this update user input function. And we are doing that in these event handler functions, as you can see here. So for example, in this name input handler function, when we are calling this update user input, again, we are passing an object to it. So when this update user input function will be called and when it will be executed, it will assign this user input variable here with this new object. Now what we are doing here, here, first we are using this spread operator on this user input object. That means this object. So this spread operator will expand the properties of this user input object into individual properties. And since we are using this spread operator inside this curly braces, those individual properties will now become a property of this object. So here we will have these five properties with their previous value. And then from those five properties, we are overwriting the value of this P name property. So these four properties will have their previous value, but this P name property here in this object, it will have this new current value. Now, the way we are updating this user input using this update user input function here, this is not entirely correct. Technically, it will work, but in some cases it could fail and it's simply not a good practice to update a state like this. Now, why is that? That's because here to update this user input object with new value, we are dependent on the previous state. So let's say the user has entered a name for the product in the form. So this expression will return us the name of the product from that form. And we want to assign that value to this P name property. To do that here, we need to update the entire object. And in that entire object, we don't want to update the value of all these properties. Here, we only want to update the value of P name property. And we want to retain the value of these four properties with its previous value. And that's why here we are dependent on the previous state snapshot of this user input when we are updating it. Now, one very important thing which you need to remember here is that, and you can think of it as a rule, that when you want to update a state and your state depends on its previous state, then you should not update your state like this like we are doing here. Instead of doing it like this, what you can do is, let me comment this code here. You can still call this update user input function. But now, instead of passing an object directly to this update user input function, you can pass a callback function to it like this. So here you can use this arrow function syntax or you can also use anonymous function. And whatever function you pass here, it is going to receive an argument. And that argument will be the previous state value. So we can call this argument maybe previous state. You can name it anything, but I'm calling it previous state. And this parameter here is going to receive the previous state, the previous state of this user input in this example. And then from this function, you can return an object and inside this object you can use the spread operator on this previous state object okay and then you can update the property which you want to update here so here we want to update p name property to event dot target dot value so this is the better approach which you should use when your current state is dependent on your previous state. Now, why should we do it like this? Why can't we use this approach here? Well, as I mentioned, in most of the cases, this approach will also work. But keep in mind that React 
schedule state update it does not perform them instantly and therefore theoretically if you schedule a lot of state update at the same time you could be depending on an outdated or incorrect state snapshot if you use this approach but if you use this approach react will make sure that you receive the latest state snapshot for this previous state parameter so this is a safer way to ensure that you always operate on the latest state snapshot and this is not only true when your initial state is an object it is also true for primitive values like string number boolean type etc so we know that this use state function returns an array and the first element of that array is the variable for which we can update the value and the second element is a function which we call to update the value of that variable and we can use this state updating function which this use state function returns into two ways first way is by passing a value and this value will be then used to update the state and the second way is by passing a callback function this callback function receives the previous state and then from that callback function we can return a new value which we want to update the variable with the advantage of using this approach where we are passing a callback function is that here we receive the previous state and then if our new state is dependent on that previous state then we can work with that previous state okay so react makes sure that for this callback function we receive the latest state which then we can use to update but we don't have that guarantee when we use this approach where we are simply passing a new value to update the state all right so in this lecture i just wanted to show you that we can also use this state updating function like this where we can also pass a callback function and that callback function receives the previous state now if you will see this kind of code in real world react application then you will know what's happening there all right so keeping all these points in mind i'm going to comment this code also and for this application i want to use multiple state approach i don't want to use single state approach so i will uncomment this code and i will comment this single state here and from these event handler functions i will uncomment this line same i will do here and i will comment this line let's do the same thing in other event handler functions so i will uncomment this line then here also i will uncomment this line and let's comment this one let's do the same thing here all right and one more thing which i want to update here is inside this availability input handler function earlier i was using this event dot target dot value now here this target is a checkbox so when we are using this value even when the checkbox is not checked it is going to return on and when the checkbox is checked in that case also it is going to return on and that's why instead of using value here i am using checked so what this checked will do is if the checkbox is checked it will return true but if the checkbox is not checked it will return false and that's the value we want for this availability because if i go to this product list component where we have this list of product you will see that here we have this is available property and to this we are assigning a boolean value true or false so that's the value we want to capture here the boolean value and for that i am using this checked property this is all from this lecture in the next lecture let's learn how to handle form submission when the user clicks on this add product button